Now, what I've got on the bench today, then, is a uh, professional panel antenna that I uh, picked up pretty cheap on eBay. It's made by a uh, company called Mars in uh, Israel, and uh, in its day, this would have cost you over a hundred pounds uh, new. This is uh, new old stock. I don't believe it's ever been. Uh, installed anywhere but it's designed for uh, long range or medium range point to point uh, Wi-Fi access where you'd have two of these connected together then it would take the internet uh, signal and uh, connect that to a uh, omnidirectional antenna for instance but uh, this is a, a professional antenna so I thought it'd be interesting just to open this up and uh, look at the difference uh, what a uh, professional antenna looks on the inside compared to some of the uh, cheaper ones that we've looked at previously on this channel. Now this particular panel antenna is designed to work with uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi but it's got quite a broad range it works from 4.9 gigahertz all the way up to 5.8 gigahertz now you may be thinking that you could use this for uh, FPV at 5.8 gigahertz for instance but this particular panel antenna only works in the vertical so it doesn't work in the horizontal just the uh, vertical so it probably be pretty useless for uh, FPV now I've got the spec sheet printed out here and I'm not going to go through all of this but I just want to point out a few interesting features uh, when you get a more professional antenna and uh, the spec sheets now this particular panel antenna is rated at 18 dBi but it's only 18 dBi in the uh, lower frequency uh, 4.9 to uh, 5.15 5 for instance and then it dips down a little bit in the middle to 16 dBi and then it creeps back up to 18 dBi the further along you get closer to the uh, 1.8 gigahertz so it's not uh, linear in its dBi through its total range remember that's quite a uh, broad range that this works off and I've mentioned it before in previous videos especially the VSWR um, it wouldn't be if you, if say you had an antenna that's uh, advertised as say uh, 1.2 1 1.1 VSWR and it was a broadband antenna it's not going to be the same throughout that broadband it would uh, jump up and down a little bit now to get into this is going to be a little bit tricky I'm going to have to drill out these rivets here I'm going to do it carefully because I want to keep this and uh, possibly have a look at the design in the future but uh, it's not held down with screws as you would typically find and uh, it's probably got some sealants along the sides as well because it's designed to work outside and uh, if this is a uh, typical panel antenna that's etched onto PCB I'm expecting to the uh, PCB to be a little bit different as well I'm expecting something that's uh, as expensive as this that the PCB will be a, a low loss type PCB not the uh, cheap PCB that you would normally find a uh, panel antenna at this frequency etched out on, on uh, eBay or Amazon but they uh, would have gone to the uh, effort of uh, etching this out on some low loss PCB so we'll probably find that in there that'll be a little bit different to what we typically see but uh, let me drill these out then and then we can lift the lid and take a closer look at this so now we've got the lid off then we can see uh, exactly what's underneath here and uh, I have to say first off I wasn't expecting it to be on uh, FR4 uh, PCB board here I did expect something that was going to be a little bit low loss especially when you consider the kind of money that this costs but uh, you know it is a an interesting design though I'm not going to pretend that I know everything that's uh, going off here because I don't I mean some people just specialize in this sort of thing you know as an RF engineer they just go down this route and specialize in uh, panel antennas for instance but uh, we can get an idea of what's going on here so let's take a look first at these four shapes here now these four shapes are identical in the middle here we've got this kind of a dip in here and they've got this tag on the edges the ones that are similar on the outer edges here two here and two here are uh, roughly the same but uh, they are a little bit shorter and uh, then again on the edges here we've got two here and two here that are uh, a little bit different again you can see the feed point goes to this triangle here and it's cut off so we haven't got that dip in there and there's no little tag on these ones here but uh, the ones in each corner 
are more like uh, what I would say are about the same kind of uh, size and shape for uh, something that's uh, you know around uh, five gigahertz these are a little bit bigger than what I expected but these squares here are uh, round about the same kind of size that are typical if you do a Google search on uh, you know say something like a panel antenna uh, kind of uh, you know design you would find these little squares and they do look just using my eye to be around the correct shape but uh, first off let's uh, not forget that this is only polarized in one direction so it's going up in fact let me get my sharpie and I'll put an arrow there so the polarization is only in that direction so you would have to think that you know each one of these shapes are all working together all in phase to you know operate as one antenna even though we've got all these uh, different uh, cutouts here it is designed to operate as one antenna so you would think that the shapes and uh, the way they're placed here the different shapes the radiation pattern is just uh, you know going in the vertical now although this is just a vertical antenna you never get one that's just purely works in the vertical you will have a little bit of power wasted on the horizontal as well but um, I have had a quick search on uh, Google and uh, there are a couple of bits of information claiming that uh, the power distribution of this is 90% in the vertical and 10% in the horizontal it doesn't come from the manufacturer so you know we can take it with a bit of a pinch of salt but uh, it probably would be in that kind of uh, ballpark as for the uh, feed lines here with all these little uh, different shapes in here we've got uh, some rectangles we've got some squares this one seems to have uh, little bits sticking out the sides here this is a square that's uh, on its side like a diamond shape all that uh, is there to make sure that uh, the impedance is 50 ohms here at the beginning of the feed line and also in the very corners is 50 ohms as well so all these different shapes are working to keep this at a 50 ohm impedance and also to keep the uh, capacitiveness of this antenna the same as well because remember if we change the uh, capacitance of an antenna we change the frequency that it will operate at so all these little squares and little squiggles like here and here that's uh, extending the uh, transmission line so it doesn't jump from there to there so all these things keep uh, the impedance at 50 ohms and also the capacitance capacitance of the antenna uniform all the way around the PCB so whether the uh, actual shapes of these elements like these ones here with this dip around here like this and this one is cut off at the edge there whether that's um, to do with keeping uh, everything uh, vertical I don't know it uh, could well be but uh, one thing I've already noticed with this antenna and I've tested with a multimeter is the four screws that are in the corners here are metal and they do go back to the uh, back reflector here and they are connected uh, so you know the uh, elements themselves are connected in these four corners to the back reflector so it is shorted out in that way so again that's uh, probably a design implementation um, I wonder if we uh, if we remove those and uh, cut that short whether we change any characteristics of this antenna or not I don't know but uh, it is interesting and not quite what I expected from uh, an antenna that costs so much money but uh, the design again is really really interesting now if you wanted to know what I mean by a low loss dielectric this is an antenna that uh, I looked at quite some time ago it's uh, made by a company called Iconia and uh, it works at uh, I think 3.2 gigahertz 3.3 gigahertz but this is not just any old plastic film on here the uh, copper has been printed on here and this is a low loss dielectric because it's working at uh, 3 gigahertz so uh, that's what I mean by something that's low loss I didn't expect the FR4 board
So it's an interesting board and uh, some of you out there might be able to comment and tell us uh, a little bit more about this, what's going on. But certainly all these feed lines here are just keeping everything at uh, 50 ohms impedance and keeping the capacitance uh, uniform. So what I thought we'd do then is take this over to the spectrum analyzer. The lid did come off without uh, cracking too much so we can put that back on because uh, testing it without the lid will change its center frequency somewhat but uh, let's put it on the spectrum analyzer and see just how broad that uh, you know the uh, working operation of this over the spectrum is so i thought i'd test this using the uh, network analyzer just because uh, we can display it better than we can on the spectrum analyzer and we can do a uh, SWR test as well but uh, the setup is the same as you see me use it on the spectrum analyzer there there's the uh, antenna under test just there and this is the display on the network analyzer so hopefully this is showing up okay on the screen one of the things uh, that uh, was a flaw with this particular network analyzer was that it did suffer from a uh, dim screen i did buy it with a dim screen which is one of the reasons i got it as cheap as i did but uh, i really need to upgrade this sometime in the future but uh, i've turned all the lights off so hopefully it's going to show up on camera but uh, i'm sweeping between uh, 4.6 gigahertz over here and uh, 6.5 gigahertz over here and we can see the two dips there the first dip is at uh, 5 gigahertz and the uh, second dip is uh, around the 5.8 gigahertz so it does work in those two frequencies it's not so good in between here and uh, it wasn't that clear about that in the uh, specs of this antenna but you can see we've got these two nice dips here with the best one being at 5 gigahertz so if i move the cursor along you can see that we're pretty good at uh, the start of 5 gigahertz there all the way and i'll move it across here so we're still pretty good at 5.13 5.14 gigahertz there and if i move the cursor all the way to the opposite end start to get a good response there at uh, 5.8 gigahertz all the way all the way to 6 gigahertz and then again on the opposite end the opposite side of 6 gigahertz so we've got two good responses there so let me uh, move the cursor back so hopefully you can see that VSWR there on the camera at uh, 5 gigahertz and it's showing at 1.0543 it's fluctuating with the last couple of digits there but you can see that uh, kind of marries up exactly what's on the specs of this uh, antenna and it did say on the specs of this antenna that uh, further up the range at 5.8 gigahertz the uh, VSWR wasn't so good so let's give it a uh, test further up on uh, 5.8 gigahertz and we can see a VSWR reading there of uh, 1.0765 it's uh, fluctuating a little bit but the maximum seems to be 1.07 so uh, you know that's still a pretty good VSWR there but not quite as good as the first response at 5 gigahertz so this is just a uh, simple test to show you how much uh, power loss you get if you use an antenna uh, outside of its polarization let's say so this will only work in the vertical so if I turn it into horizontal I just want to give you a, a rough idea of how much power loss you can get so what I've got here on the setup I'm uh, generating a 5 gigahertz signal at uh, 20 db over here and feeding that into a uh, 20 db uh, amplifier there and the signals going into a 5 gigahertz uh, antenna here and i've got the uh, test here the uh, panel antenna under test here and that's connected to the uh, power center going into the boot and uh, power meter here and we're showing uh, negative 14 dbm there so you know it's around uh, 14 13 dBm if I put my hand in front it'll uh, jump up there but uh, yeah around 14 dBm so what I'm going to do is slowly turn this because it is in its optimal uh, polarization here it is in the vertical polarization so I'm just going to turn this 
and you should see the power drop on the uh, power meter there. So it's now turned into the uh, horizontal and you can see the negative uh, 4950 dBm there so we've lost a hell of a lot of power by using it outside of its polarization. If I turn it back into the vertical again we should see that power come back. And there we are, we're settling on uh, negative 13. So, you know, if this did work in the horizontal and the vertical, it would be really good for FPV for a quadcopter, let's say, at 5.8 gigahertz. But because uh, your quadcopter is all over the place, it's not <laughs> always going to be in the uh, vertical position. It's not really going to do you any good, which is a bit of a shame, really, because uh, it does seem to be uh, a really effective design, especially when you look at it on the network analyzer. So to wrap this up then, a uh, really nice uh, panel antenna and uh, a very nice VSWR on those uh, two points at uh, 5 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz there. I mean, uh, all this uh, kind of uh, feed transmission line here and everything I talked about, that's keeping everything nice and uniform will add to that uh, really nice VSWR. But uh, if you do see one of these and, uh, you know, the frequency is around uh, 5.8 gigahertz then you know check with the seller to make sure that uh, it's uh, dual polarized in the horizontal and the vertical uh, just to make sure because uh, as you saw in that uh, last test if you don't you're going to be uh, really disappointed if you want to use this for FPV but uh, as I said at the beginning as a point-to-point -point, uh, Wi-Fi system then uh, it's really good because you don't want to waste energy throwing it in the horizontal it's best to throw all of that energy into uh, one uh, pole there and uh, the same on the pickup if you've got them both matched then you're going to get a really good connection over quite a bit of distance i mean you're talking five gigahertz wi-fi here it doesn't have the uh, penetrating power and the uh, propagation that uh, 2.4 gigahertz has got but uh, you definitely get a lot more speed and bandwidth with the 5 gigahertz. So, you know, as a point-to-point -point, uh, Wi-Fi antenna, this is going to work really well. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I uh, hope you found it a little bit more interesting looking at the output uh, on this with the uh, network analyzer. And uh, I have to say, I haven't used the network analyzer in uh, quite a quite a while and that's down to me being a little bit lazy as well because uh, a spectrum analyzer you can just turn it on and uh, you know away you go with your measurement with the network analyzer I have to set it up and calibrate it and everything else just takes a little bit more time but uh, a network analyzer is much more accurate for uh, looking at frequency response and uh, especially uh, you know you can just press a button and work out the VSWR there and especially that last test as well just to show the uh, power difference you get if you uh, have a couple of mismatched antennas. So if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and if you know anything more about uh, how this uh, panel antenna works you know the radiation pattern with all these uh, different shapes here in the elements rather than just having a square or a rectangle shaped element then uh, please let us know uh, below in the comments and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one.